ham clock with a T.O. twist. Coming up. Is this the Geochron killer? I don't know, because I don't know what the Geochron does. I looked at the price tag and figured I couldn't afford it, but ham clock is cheap old man compliant, and I like that. What we've got here on the screen is a Raspberry Pi, and this is any old Raspberry Pi you got laying in the drawer, but I do have links to some of this kit down below. It is using the official 7-inch touchscreen, which is 800 by 480, which is almost no good for anything else except for ham clock and it is using the Smarty Pie case, and this thing is all kinds of touchscreen fancy and has all kinds of features. Let me show you what you're gonna need in order to get this thing built out. Hang on one second. All right, first thing you're gonna need is an SD card. Any old SD card will do. Uh, this is the cheapest one that I could find on Amazon that's of a reliable type, because I like SanDisk cards. You might have a favorite brand that you like. Go ahead and get that one. There are links to all of this stuff in the description down below for you, and they are affiliate links which help support the channel. It helps me bring more great content to you. Um, all you need to put on the SD card is the Raspberry Pi, OS with the light desktop and the ham clock software, which is pretty lightweight stuff. So not a whole lot of stuff going on there. Let's see what else we need. If you don't have an SD card reader, you're going to need an SD card reader. This is a um, USB 3.0 compliant USB card reader. And one of the cool things about this is that the SD card itself slides into the USB port like magic. The only thing I don't like about this, and it doesn't really matter all that much, is that this thing gets hot. But the reason why it doesn't matter is because I only keep it installed for as long as it takes to write the SD card, and then I pull it out and I stick it back in the drawer until the next time I need to do that. A lot of times when you get an SD card, it will have some type of adapter to fit into an SD card slot. Modern machines don't have SD card slots in them anymore. It kind of stinks. So get yourself something that will do an SD card adapter thing and uh, this will do it with USB 3 because I don't think the SD cards are any faster than USB 3 at this point. This is the one that I got. I last got it January 26, 2018. It has lasted me well. This is the official, official, official uh, seven inch Raspberry Pi touch screen display. This thing runs 800 by 480 screen resolution. It's not really good for much of your day-to-day -day activities because the screen resolution is too small. It's not that the screen size, the seven inches is too small small. It's that the 800 by 480 just isn't big enough. You can't even get uh, WSJTX to display on this thing because half of the app is off the bottom of the screen and you can't really reach it and it's a pain in the butt. But I do recommend this fantastically for ham clock and you will see why as we get farther into it. This here is the Smarty Pie touch two case for the official Raspberry Pi seven inch display. And this will work with all of the pies. Let me see where it says it. It's all of the pies from model B through model four. Yeah, so Raspberry Pi B plus, 2B, 3B, 3A plus, 3B plus, and four. I have the model that works with the uh, Raspberry Pi 3B plus and older variants and not with the Raspberry Pi 4 variants, but that's okay. Whatever one you have should work with this display case. What I like about this display case is that it has a very nice way of displaying, as you saw in the original photo, the uh, seven inch touch screen. It also holds the Raspberry Pi itself in place and it comes with these uh, Y cable adapters for doing your power. It comes with some display ribbon cables if you need them. It comes with the feet and it even has some little Lego compatible stuff if you wanna stick some Lego things onto the case and extend it that way. So this is a fantastic little case. It looks pretty ham sexy and will be a nice addition to your shelf and you will see that as we get farther into the project or if you rewind the video back a little bit, you'll see where I showed it in the beginning. This is a fantastic case. I like it for the seven inch display. I do not like it for routine maintenance and upgrades and changes to your Pi because the SD card slot is buried on the inside and you have to remove the Raspberry Pi. And I feel like I'm gonna damage the display cables and I'm probably not, but I'm just paranoid like that. So 
fantastic for the ham pie application because you're going to put the SD card in once and set it on your shelf and forget about it. If you don't already have a Raspberry Pi 4, this is one to get. There is a link again in the description down below for all of this stuff. Um, you do not need a Raspberry Pi 4 to do this, but the Raspberry Pi 4 is actually cheaper than the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. I did go looking for one, couldn't find it. Raspberry Pi 4 is going to be a little overkill for this. So if you have an upcoming project um, and need a new Raspberry Pi, I would get this one and then move the old Raspberry Pi back a generation to do ham clock type stuff. Lastly, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi power supply. This Raspberry Pi power supply will power the Pi itself, and it will also power the display, so you're gonna need something a little beefy. I have a 2.5 amp power supply that is not strong enough. This one here is a 3.5 amp, and it's from our friends over at Argon, and Argon makes fantastic high-quality Raspberry Pi accessories. I have a video where I demonstrate the Raspberry Pi 4 Argon 1 case which is a fantastic case it, it makes your uh, raspberry pi into a sleek looking desktop type machine and then also for the sherry pie hat it's using the argon neo case and that's also a fantastic quality case i'm very impressed with those two products I have no problem recommending this power supply for you all right normally i use etcher to do my SD card writing, but uh, this might make it one less step if you haven't used this before. I haven't used this before. Let's do it together. What this is going to do is it's going to download the imager, and I believe it's also going to download the uh, OS as part of the whole process for you. I'm currently running on Mac OS, but you can see that this works on Windows or on Ubuntu, so let's download the one for Mac OS. All right, that is all downloaded, and what we need to do is drag the Raspberry Pi imager into the applications folder. Ta da! And now we need to run Raspberry Pi Imager. And I love it how we get these little security messages. So I downloaded the software, I mounted the image, I went in, I copied the file into my applications folder, I ran it, and now it's asking me if it's secure. A little late in the game. All right, so I want to choose an OS. And I want Raspberry Pi OS with Raspberry Pi Desktop, Raspberry Pi OS Other, and I want the Raspberry Pi OS Lite because all I need, nope. I need the desktop, but not the recommended applications. 1.2 gigs, 2.8 gigs, 0.4 gigs. Yep, all right, so this is the one I want, 1.2 gigs. Choose storage, I have to take my SD card and my SD card reader and plug it in somewhere along the line here. Let's unplug one and plug in another. USB plugs only go in one of two ways. The older ones, USB-C is fine now, and you get it wrong like at least 50% of the time. So I stuck it in. It's not recognizable by this computer. That's okay. I'm going to ignore it. We'll go back to choose storage. 16 gig card is what I have. I'm going to write it. All existing data on generic storage will be erased. Are you sure? Well, yeah, that's what I asked you to do. Oh, it wants a password. Don't peek at my password. Yes, you can have access to files on a removable volume. And we'll come back when this is done. All right, that did not take too long. And when it was finished, it did the verify cycle just like Etcher would do. All in all, not too bad. There's one more thing that we need to do before we go too much farther. And that is to prepare the SD card so that we can do a bunch of our work here. Let's run a terminal program. All right, we need to remove and reconnect. And that thing is hot. Remove and reconnect the... SD card, which will create a mount of CD slash volume slash boot. All right, in here, this is the boot partition of the SD card that will be booting our Raspberry Pi. First thing we need to do is touch a file called SSH. This is going to create an empty file that has um, Obviously, it's empty. It has nothing in it. But this is a flag that tells the Raspberry Pi to boot the um, Pi up with SSH already enabled. Having SSH enabled and not being able to get on the Wi-Fi doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the next thing we need to do is copy over the WPA supplicant file. There will be a link 
There will be a listing of the contents of the file in the description down below. And all you need to do is put in your Wi-Fi access point ID and your Wi-Fi access point password. And that will get your machine to automatically turn on Wi-Fi and turn on SSH when you first boot it. So I'm going to copy that. I put it on my desktop. And there we go. Let's get this thing in the Pi and then get back over here. When your Pi boots up, it's going to automatically connect to your network if all goes well, and you won't know what the IP address is. I am on a Linux-like machine. Uh, again, this is Mac OS, and a quick way to figure out what the IPs are on your network is to scan for them. I'm gonna do sudo nmap-s capital P, which means it's gonna do a ping scan. I'm gonna give it my network IP range, 192.168.200.0 slash 24, so it's gonna scan the entire uh, 255 addresses by pinging them all and then when it finds one it's going to try and do some MAC address reading and try and decode some of that MAC address type stuff and that will be able to show you your IPs that are on your network. If it's not obvious which one it is you have your seven inch display plug a keyboard into your Raspberry Pi and take a look there and that's how you figure out the IP address. Okay, my Raspberry Pi is at 192.168.200.61, and I am on macOS, so I ran the terminal program, and I am SSHing over to it using the Pi user. This thing has already connected itself to my Wi-Fi network, and it has enabled SSH because we told it to in the previous step, so we're good to go there. Um, what it's going to do for a default password is the word Raspberry. And I got to be on the right window when I type stuff in. All right, so we are logged into the Raspberry Pi. And the first thing we're going to need to do is change the Pi password. Otherwise, it's going to pop up on the Raspberry Pi screen all day long and annoy us. And that's not what we want to do. We don't want to be annoyed. So P-A-S-S-W-D to change the password. Type in your current password of Raspberry. And then type in your new password. All right, so we've got our passwords updated successfully. Okay, we're also obviously going to need the HamClock software. This is the HamClock website, which is clearskyinstitute.com slash ham slash hamclock. You're gonna be presented with a lovely picture of what HamClock looks like. You scroll down a little bit, there is a download link right here. We'll click on that download link, and then uh, you can grab the zip file or the tar gz file the tarball i'm going to grab the tarball i want to right click on it copy link address and then i want to go over to the um, raspberry pi ssh session that we just finished working with i'm in pi's home directory the pi users home directory i'm going to wget and i'm going to paste in what i just copied from the web page and that's going to go download that file now we've got that file downloaded. I already downloaded it once. That's why it's got that dot one on the end of it. Don't worry about that. I do tar dash X for extract dash Z for compressed file with gzip dash V because I want to see all the files fly by on my screen. F for file name, ESP, hit the tab key and you get uh, ESP ham clock dot TGZ. Press enter and it extracts just like that. CD space. ESP ham clock. And before we go and do any work here with the ESP ham clock, we do need to install a library. And that library is the um, install lib x11 dev. And I've already installed it. So it will not install it again but it is already installed, you need to do that. All of the commands that you need to do this from the Linux operating system will be down in the description down below. Don't feel like you gotta take too much notes, but that was sudo apt install libx11-dev. I put a dash y on the end of it so that it didn't ask me, and that is now installed. We do make, and it should give us back a couple of descriptions. We are running on the 800 by 480 seven inch touchscreen, but this thing will work on 4K displays. So if you get a fantastic Prime Day deal or a uh, Black Friday deal, or somebody gifts you a nice uh, 80 inch TV screen for your living room and you wanna take your old 40 inch TV screen out, this program will work just fine on that, and that would be even extra ham sexy. I'm gonna do the ham clock uh, 480, so we do make, dash j4 because the raspberry pi 3b plus has four cores on it 
and I want to do ham clock dash 800 by 480 and we'll zip right on through this okay so the compiling is all finished now it didn't take too long next thing we want to do is again be in the right window sudo make install and this is going to copy all of the files into their proper locations and ham clock is ready at user local bin ham clock awesome there's a couple more things that we need to do with that in order to get it to run on boot up and do some other lovely housekeeping type stuff so what i want to do next is bring up a remote control session of the raspberry pi desktop and we will show you how to go through the initial setup type stuff all right, so to give you an idea of the size of what an 800 by 480 screen looks like, this entire display is recorded in 1920 by 1080 HD resolution. And then I have a little box down there that I can put the um, software in so I can show it to you sitting over there. And then that's the 800 by 480 screen that's sitting unmagnified in the middle of that. Let's see if we can magnify that up a little bit to make it a little bit easier to read for you. We are on the Raspberry Pi display here, and what we need to do is launch ham clock. And the first time that you launch ham clock, it will ask you to configure it. You can do this with a keyboard plugged into the Raspberry Pi. When we get a bunch of this stuff done, uh, you will not need to have the keyboard plugged in anymore. When you turn the machine off, it will go off. When you turn it back on, it will come right back up into ham clock. You'll be all set. You will not need a keyboard plugged into it. So let's do the ham clock config. And I want to click on the screen so that I can do some configuration. First thing I want to do is thank WB0OEW for creating such wonderful software. And then I'm going to move his call sign out of the way and put mine in. And it wants latitude and longitude. So I'm going to look up my latitude and my longitude. My latitude and longitude for Luck, Wisconsin, 45.5757. And my longitude is minus 92.48242. IP geolocate, no, GPSD, no. You can actually put on IP geolocate if you want to. Wi-Fi, leave this Wi-Fi thing here set to no because we've already got Wi-Fi configured and it will actually unconfigure your Wi-Fi. But uh, this would be great if it was in a Raspberry Pi image and it booted straight into this thing and then you could configure all of this stuff. And I'm sure somebody has done it, but not this guy. Log usage, I'm not going to log my usage. Click over here to go from page one to page two. There's a couple of options on page two that I want to set. One of them is I want to have a DX cluster. So we click on the word cluster and then it allows us to enter in a host dxc.n9bc.com. Port number 7300 is one that is close to me. And I do want to map the prefix. And then NTP, we'll leave that at default. That's the network time protocol. It's going to find the best one. Units, you have a choice of Imperial or metric. I'm going to stick with Imperial. Full screen, yes. GPIO is off. If you turn GPIO on, it will allow you to do some rig control type functions um, in one direction or another. And this is the brightness minimum, brightness maximum. I don't want to change the brightness on this because I like it just the way it is. You might want to change yours. That's totally up to you. I'm fine with that. Page three, these are the colors of the traces on the map. I'm not gonna change any of them. And then down here below is where you can um, have this thing automatically come on and turn itself off. I'm gonna have it come on at 8 a.m. in the morning and go off at 10 p.m. at night. And then if you click these buttons, it will copy left or right. So I'm just copying this all the way across for every day. I do not yet know if this is in UTC or not in UTC, um, or if it's in local time. If it's in local time, this will be 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. my time. If this is in UTC, it's gonna come on in the middle of the night for me and then go off in the middle of the afternoon. That's gonna be a little weird. Click page three again, and it should go back to page one because it's all that there is. You hit done, and it's gonna start finding a bunch of stuff. And it is saying that it is ready, so I will go ahead and click skip to go through there. And this is what it looks like. It is still downloading some maps. 
and some things and it will keep getting better as it gets more things downloaded. And part of this is, oh, there's the disc. The interface on this is really neat. It has an absolute amazing amount of features. We've got the DX cluster set up. We have uh, DE and DX, and it, this thing can backfeed in from WSJTX. So when you make an FT8 contact um, or any other WSJTX contact, it will change the DX information to who the contact is that you made. Uh, you can click on some of these charts and graphs and things, and they will change. And you can click behind your call sign and change some colors there. You can click on it with the left mouse button or the right mouse button, and it will change things accordingly. Find a color that you like. Tons and tons and tons and tons of things. I recommend that you spend some time clicking around and playing with it. I also recommend that you check out some of the documentation on the Clear Sky website about this. Fantastic stuff. We've got some more configuration to do. This stuff here on the map where it looks a little washed out in color is because of VNC. It looks so much better in person. We'll get some beauty shots of this thing as we go along. But I just wanted to get that set up and out of the way. There's a couple of more uh, lifestyle tweaks that we need to do right after this. So I'm gonna close this app out and then we'll get back to doing the lifestyle tweaks. All right, so that quality of life stuff, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is get this thing to start up automatically when the Raspberry Pi boots. So again, the commands are gonna be in the description down below, nothing to worry about there, but I'm gonna do them here because they need to be done. We're going to get into the Pi users home directory and I was already there, but type CD and that takes you to the user's home directory directly. And you want to make a set of folders. In this case, it is slash home slash pi slash dot config slash LX session slash LXDE dash pi. And it needs to be all um, slashes in that direction and capitals and whatnot in that order. The dash P says, make all of these directories along the path if you don't find them. So if the dot config folder is missing, it won't complain. It'll just make that, make LX session, make LXDEPI. These folders already exist on my machine, but that's the command that you need. And then we wanna change into that folder. And what I did was I pressed the up arrow to get to the command. I pressed control A to get to the beginning. I pressed control D to delete all the things I needed to delete. And that got me a usable, reusable command line. So now we're in this folder and what I want to do is create a file called auto start and I've actually already made this file but we'll open up our favorite text editor my favorite text editor is Joe Joe's own editor and the file name is auto start and in here we want to run a couple of commands and what this is going to do is enable the ham clock application to run in full screen mode with no borders and no window dressings or anything like that and it's also going to start the ham clock software this will disable your desktop the only thing you're going to have on this machine at this point is going to be ham clock and you can't really exit the program or anything else so be aware that once you do this that's where you're stuck you'll still be able to ssh into the machine you can ssh in and shut it down if you want to do that you can ssh in and rename this file to not start like i did and then reboot the machine and it will reboot into x windows as normal but i want this to be my dedicated ham clock so i'm going to save and exit this file Again, all of those commands are in the description down below, nothing to worry about there. The next thing that we wanna do, because this is going to be running all day and all night for the foreseeable future, is we wanna turn off the LEDs that are on the Raspberry Pi itself. So again, your favorite text editor, this time you're gonna to wanna to run sudo and your favorite text editor and the file is slash etsy slash rc dot local. If you're familiar with the old DOS days, this is the auto exec bat file of Linux, and this is not system control or uh, sysv in it or anything along those lines. This is just an RC file that loads when the machine boots up. And we want to echo zero to sys class LEDs, LED zero brightness, and that's going to turn off LED zero. We're going to echo zero to sys class LEDs, LED one brightness, that's going to turn off LED one on your display. Make sure that these go all the way at the bottom of the file, but before the exit zero, because the exit zero actually tells this script to exit with no error codes. The, the zero is exited successfully, everything ran great. So if you put anything down here like echo, um, subscribe to TO, 
it won't be run. So make sure that you do stuff like that before the exit is zero. Like do it now, that's a good time to do it. All right, so exit your favorite text editor. And now when you reboot, you will be greeted with a LED free Raspberry Pi and a display running ham clock that is fully configured to your liking. There you go, ham clock with a TO twist. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below, do all that fancy YouTube stuff. And thanks for being awesome.